It's Thursday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the latest with me. YK in the building. Yo, yo, yo. Mike, why are you only there for two days this week? You should have been doing four or five days a day. This, this, <laughs> you have gone for like two or three months. I didn't months. know that I'm 62. Mike, it doesn't matter. Please. Uh, ah, you can't be doing two days. So next week, you're doing four days. Two looking 25. Uh, I tell I you. <laughs> when I look at myself in the mirror, Mike, I Mike, you know you inspire me. Uh, I mean, in the last few days, I've been struggling. I have a lot of mental struggle. And I just, and what was motivating me was like, if YK at 62 can be happy, mm -hmm. fulfilled, mm -hmm. and joyful, Mariah, you're just 42, honey. You got this. Yes. You so got just this. your mentor seeing you I in my face is enough inspiration, right? I'm telling you, I use you, you to, like, you come up in my, in my thoughts when I'm like, <laughs> you're giving up now, but YK hasn't given up. Ah, I say that to myself. I'm Dang. like, okay, so you're here for us like an inspiration. I'm, telling I'm, I'm so Serious. glad. So I should have been doing that two days a week so I can be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Sustaining <laughs> so the. Hi, I'm fine. Oh, um, you know this Nigeria. I hate the way we. The, you do the wrong thing and you make it right. Mm. Mm. Everybody be on this lane. That. Like our road, uh, finally the governor is doing one side. Okay. So uh, um, everybody is using one lane. Come this way for those cars. Yes, then, and you okay, you wait, and then the other side comes. But everybody is now going on the road on the side where, and what they have mean? turned it to the right thing. Somebody on Saturday bashed my car. I was on the right lane. Yes. The most painful part was I was on the right lane. He now comes from this side. And then their lane suddenly becomes the right lane. Yeah. Mm. Because they are now in the middle. They have not doubled the lane. They even tripled it. Mm. So he now, you know. Tries to come in front of you. No, no, he just. Um, I know because me, I don't want to bash my car. So I just go gently. Go he, because he wanted to make sure I didn't pass, he, he went on and then bashed yeah. his oh. own car. <laughs> and his mirror came off. Do you know what he did? He came out of the car and then hit my own mirror <gasps> till it broke. I was mad at you. Oh. Can you imagine? Oh, what well, would somebody do I that? His name like he. Is what did you do? You just kept quiet, Abi. I, I tried to chase him. Another car that saw what it happened, happened. now blocked him. blocked him. He came out. He was drunk and high. Look ah. at that. Oh, gosh. You know? I know that I'm the one that hit him. You know? In the end, I, I just looked at him and thought to myself, you know what? I'm better. No use. There's this no one use. is. It is no use talking to him. Yeah. He believes he's right. His passenger came out and said, I should not be annoyed that what that guy did was wrong. Mm. The passenger was still so if his passenger can say that it's to It's just this indiscipline just, we have generally. We're just totally. indisciplined. Mm, totally. Totally. Let me come to you, Tokwe. How are you doing? Sorry, uh, I just had to answer that okay. rant. Um, I'm good. <laughs> no um, earrings again? I, the earrings somewhere in my bag. <laughs> the wig, I was like, ah, oh, because of YK, I'm not going to wear my wig. Uh, that wear YK is always supporting. YK is, in yes, YK is always supporting that we should wear kind of natural hair. And some people just, and I have good natural hair. Mm. And then I'm uh, now making myself feel like it's not fine enough because it is not wig, because it, I felt that wig is glam. So I just told myself, like, okay. Why can't you clap it to wear the wig tomorrow? No, I, no I, I might wear it no, next week, is, but I am, I'm going through yeah. that journey of getting comfortable with seeing my face I, like this. To continue that process, I told her she must have a girl because somebody must inherit this hair. How can you have just a bunch of boys? You are even a gay. What is that? Somebody must inherit this beautiful hair. Exactly, that's Maybe the worry. Boys. <laughs> yeah. I cannot deal. She will tell you things. Everybody has been telling me, ah, how are you coping with boys? I didn't understand. Now I'm understanding. Uh, like the fight, the shout. They are not there yet. When they are teenagers, that's a huge ah, bloody job. Now boys. I'm understanding. Because they're you coping? I'm like, it's not a big deal. It's a big <laughs> deal. <laughs> they are fighting. Let me come to you, ma'am. Oh. How are you doing? I'm fine. My own is also a traffic um, rant, oh. but not a rant exactly. But I just w would like to know what the speed limit for these um, lorries are mm. when they are packed <laughs> full. You know, they've got all the things high up on their lorries, and then they are speeding. Today, coming to work, um, there are about three of them in a row. You know, obviously they had come out of the port and they were just speeding. And I'm thinking there has to be a speed limit for lorries like this. For vehicles like this, what is it, and who is there to ensure that they are, you know, they are following yeah, the speed me? Yeah, the the speed limits because yeah. it definitely speed was just a serious. A lot of them, the are oh. bad, wobbly. wobbly. Yes, so I just need to know: Do I take a video? Who do I send it to? Right. We want to things see we need our, to. Uh, so I, I hope FRNC is listening so that they can yes. yeah. text us and give us the number. So I was in Ibadan yesterday, and I went to speak at um, a female roundtable. Was nice. Was good to was good to be amongst women, but 
again, YK inspired me because when I usually I wear flat shoes, I just told myself, wear heels. And you felt I just and so I wore flats there and I got to when I got to the venue and I wore high heels. Mm, hey, no I entered <laughs> hey, like a YK <laughs> sat down, <laughs> did my speech <laughs> on the heels. I'm <laughs> like, hey, Mariah Mashua, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was just like, you know what, Mariah is that hey. And I and I went yeah, and I felt too. good. And, and I was you like, felt good. You I felt, felt really feminine. good. You I felt really, I felt like a woman. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to a break. It's Thursday. It's our gist in day. When we come back, we do the serious stuff by looking at the papers, and then we're going to our gist. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Right. So we're going to start with the nation. <clears throat> Electricity crisis. I left, I, le I left my glasses today, so I'll be straining. Governors reject sale of 10 power plants. It's difficult to fake new Naira news, says Buhari. After Babalola to challenge Ekiti Speaker's impeachment, Ogo Central Monarchs back Abiodun for second term. Ex AGF Idris returned $900,000 cash, witness tells court. Oshun Palace raised. Tinubu inaugurates a Boyi government house road. Bandits demand new Naira notes to free abducted victim. You gotta be kidding me. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. not you. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have demands. Where yeah. Who's, who's starting with? Okay, let me start with the bank kidnappers demanding. So they kidnapped um, some people, four people in Zamfara State, and um, they first demanded 10 million. Then they re later reduced it to 5 million, saying they will not collect the old Naira notes. Uh, that they will wait till the Naira notes is in circulation, and then they should pay them their 5 million Naira with the new Naira notes. Hmm. Um, and you know that the banks are saying that, uh, and EFCC too, they are saying that they're going to be screening um, large withdrawals going forward. So would this mean that it would also help them uh, trace. Um, trace where these monies end up and they help, uh, you know, thereby helping, you know, um, I think it is, is arresting these kidnappers? Just mark the money. Yeah. Any large tranche, you should note it because mm. what, what we know is five. Oh, we, we're not meant to do five over five million naira cash transactions mm. anymore as individuals. Mm. So if you are withdrawing, but those more, guys are not putting their money in the banks. So the they transaction, the, the transaction is always just ammunition and food. So I guess well, it can be traced. But mm. Nigeria, do we have that tracing money. capacity? There's a lot of conversation mm. around Talking this. Talking about the new money, as we know, it was finally. Um, launched the president at the unveiling of the um, the new 1,500 and 200 Naira notes says that uh, this particular notes have some security features that will make it impossible for fraudsters and counterfeiters to counterfeit the money and he's also proud of the fact that this uh, redesign was done locally by the Nigerian um, uh, NSP um, that the Nigerian security printing um, PLC he, he mentioned that um, many African countries actually print their monies abroad and is imported into their countries like we import goods. But he's proud to say that we have done it locally this time. He also said that it was long overdue. The CBN, he said the CBN governor had approached him and talked about the need for us to control the currency circulation. Also, he um, brought to his attention that there's a lot of money that's been hoarded. And so this will go a long way to... Um, reversing some of those issues. He says, um, ideally, uh, currency redesign needs to be done every five to eight years, and it's been 20 years since the last one. The CBN governor also talked about, you know, he was <coughs> grateful to the president for supporting um, to do this at a time like that, uh, at a time like this, and he also was proud that it was done locally as well. And he says that this will also help with making sure that implementation of monetary policies going forward will be done properly. Uh, it said that it will affect um, inflation rates, you know, and so many other things. So let me quickly I, I just add, wish they would uh, add it. No, no, no not to use our No, I just wanted to say that um, mm. I would prefer they call it recoloring. <laughs> People have been doing all shades like that. The shades are shades. <laughs> but, they say it was saturation. <laughs> I want to talk about the, still within the economy story, um, the Attorney General of the Federation that was suspended, Ahmed Idris, voluntarily returned nine hundred thousand dollars in cash and the um, witnesses if you remember it was suspended because 
um, there was an allegation of missing 109 billion naira public funds under his watch. Said he compromised the TSA and led to breach in trust to the tune of 109 billion. So, um, in the, Please the figures between again. him and someone else, he returned 900 thousand dollars in voluntarily in cash. And they said it is shy of the 100,000. It was supposed to be a million that they said he had. You know, so I'm, I want a public trial. I want it to be everywhere. It is too small in the papers. We need to talk about this. And this man that was appointed under this administration in 2015, he was suspended when the story came out. He and three others. It is still an allegation, and we are waiting for a conviction, a proper trial. We don't <coughs> want a mistrial. We don't want a, trial, a, a case thrown out because they don't have enough evidence. Let it follow through. That's why we don't want a media trial. Let them gather all the evidences properly mm. and then take them to court so that we don't hear a story that, oh, it's all a media trial. Uh, I was going to take the governor. So 10 governors under the auspices of the Nigerian Governors Forum uh, um, rejected the sale of 10 power plants. They're asking also that um, they insist on a legal solution for the $418 million Paris Club refund fee now, saying that, it, that nothing should be done until the courts um, say on the matter. There's also that issue that the court order restraining all parties in the suit from taking any step to sell any of these 10 power plants that will make or render the outcome of the motion on notice seeking for intellectual injunction um, nugatory. So the effect of, so I, pretty much they're just saying that they shouldn't sell these 10 plants. But I didn't really get re the, the, the issues, I'm not, the, the, the report didn't give us the issues the NGF is having specifically concerning these power plants. I hope we can have that at some point, but they're just asking that none, the, the, the sale should be stopped. Let me move quickly now to the punch. Governor stopped deductions, consultations, head for French court. New Naira, CBN, EFCC to track large withdrawals. Police kill Oshun Prince, hoodlums raise palace. Excess crude accounts declined by 89%. AKT, Sands says speaker's impeachment could detect. NNPC meets marketers as petrol scarcity bites harder. Obese plane grounded, campaign train seeks alternative arrangements. And PDP differs as APC dismisses electronic result transmission. Okay, which story are we starting with in punch? I should start with the Ocean Prince. Um, apparently, they had um, installed a new Oba, a new, um, the new Akin, Akin of Ikin. Um, about Olaleko Akadiri, they said um, he was the new monarch of the town. But they, I think there were problems because they had locked the palace. Mm. So the, um, they were outside the, the palace. I think the police were trying to get access to it. So there was a scuffle. According to um, on Lukazu, the police fired a shot and the prince, um, Lukmon mm -hmm. Alatunji, was shot in the head. Mistake, it was a mistaken, it wasn't on purpose. It was a stray bullet. You know, and then um, four other persons sustained injuries the, because they were fighting. It was a fight. Anyway, the area boys got angry, the, or the youth the, in that area got angry and burnt one of the buildings in the palace. Mm. They, and they stopped the uh, fire truck from coming to um, take put it out. Yeah, put out the fire. But the police say no, that's not what happened, though. That they were just there to ensure that there was renovation. Mm. And it's that renovation that uh, they now fought. And then the area boys now shot and killed the prince. Mm. So the police story is totally different. He said, she said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue with our review. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So why can you borrow me her pair of glasses? So who's going to punch? What other story? Yes. Um, yeah. So still at the unveiling, the CBN governor has said that um, the CBN will be working with other agencies like EFCC, ICPC, and other um, corrupt and other related offenses commission to work.
together, especially when it has to do with withdrawals from banks. It says going forward, um, large withdrawals would include you, um, will involve people filling in so many documents. I think they're going to make it so tedious for you that you may have to decide, you know what, I'm not interested, that you will fill so many forms, they will ask you for so many details, BVN, NIN, everything, and that they're trying to you know, usher our economy into a cashless economy. It says there's no country anywhere in the, in, in, in the world that, it's de that wants their country to be a um, cash-dependent um, economy. And we have to gradually move into that um, form of um, a cashless economy. It's and, it's, well, and then he also said that so many people were saying that um, this redesign was targeting a specific person or specific set of people, a specific mm. group of people, that that's not the case. That is just that we have to, that this is standard practice. Every five to eight years, you must redesign the, mm. um, your currency, and they haven't done that in 20 years, and this affects, um, and this is, will help with the control of the currency out there, just like, you know, I'd mentioned in the story I took earlier. And this is really for our economy and not for a specific person. So going forward, people have to understand that they will not be able to just yeah, walk into the banks and get out large sums of money. They start with the banks. Yes. I mean, look, you will get POS. You, you, you will, the banks will not transmit your money. Well, there are, these, are, these, are, these are conversations we're still talking about having, but we cannot talk about it right you now. You will just be getting charged back. For what? Yeah. Me, I know what I'm suffering with, with banks, so I beg. You deposit just, your cash, I beg. Uh, uh, and they know you're a cash business. Let me take the issue of petrol. I think we talked about this several times, but it's still in the papers because NNPC would now be meeting with the marketers um, as this scarcity has actually come to Lagos. Now they're accused everywhere. So um, the, I think it was he, the, the National Public Relations Officer, the Independent um, Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria Chief, Ukadike Chidedu, was explaining the situation, which we have been told several times. But let me just reiterate it for those who haven't heard about it. So they're having issues because the cost to transport from the mother vessel to the daughter vessel, which, which actually fills up the tanks, has quadrupled. Because it used to be $38,000, it has moved to around $108,000 to $111,000. And if the government is insisting they pay, they, 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 they charge 145 naira to the per liter, it doesn't make any sense for, for, for the marketers. So there yes. has to be a review. I mean, they're having, that's why they're having issues. They can't even bring over over the again. fuel to our, to our filling stations. Some people are selling 210, because we had bought 210 yesterday, or yeah, two days ago. Some people are still selling at 145. So it's really difficult for these marketers to retain the pump prices. And, but hopefully the NNPC will be meeting with them this, um, today, because everywhere now there's scarcity. Mm. And it's a serious issue. Let me take the story okay. of um, the um, presidential campaign of the Labour Party presidential candidates. Peter, um, Peter Obi's yeah. plane was grounded. They said it was in Ibadan. And it was supposed to take up from Ibadan. The plane carries the National Working Committee and the NEC members of the campaign. And it was, according to them, grounded by powers that be. So the Deputy <laughs> Director General and Campaign Manager for Labour Party presidential campaign, um, Usileko Op... O o mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, the man, Mr. Obaze. <laughs> was the first to raise alarm on Twitter to say that there were powers that be that grounded oh. their craft. And they were citing that it was the, that the powers that be are citing regulatory reasons to slow down their campaign moves, but that they will find alternative ways. The conversation, the, the report, however, from um, the, cover, the side of the NCC was that this is, is not, it's not a private plane. There is a schedule. The plane belongs to a scheduled operator and it is based on that shadow operator that they grounded that plane and it can be easily fixed. But, you know, it's not everything that we should, we should get. Please, please put out facts only. Because right now, all through this report, there season. was no statement mm. on what was the reason it was grounded. Mm. What reason did the NCC give for the plane being grounded? Because if you are just speculating that it's powers that be, it is political, I think, that's not right. I think also Let it's us campaign give season, facts. people should understand Don't heat up the that policy. these are sensitive times. So from the federal government side, and from the party side, everybody must ensure it's only fact says, not not based on yeah. powers that be or yeah. sentiments or something. Be, be very careful this yes. time so that we don't, we don't hit up. Okay, let's take, uh, moving on with the Daily Sun. We designed Naira, 165 billion Naira, back in banks, as Buhari unveils the new note. 2023 presidency, why I prefer Obi to Tinubuse's Adi Banjo. INEC raises fresh security alerts over 2023 polls. UBTH to commence open heart surgery, says CMD. Few scarcity commuters groan as fair hits roof in Lagos and Abuja. APC chairman 
expresses doubt on INEC's capacity to transmit election results electronically. British envoy decries electoral violence, says world watching Nigeria. Article will soon meet G5 governor, says Okowa South South governors to reaffirm support. Enugi government flays attack on farmers in Eha Amufu calls for immediate deployment of more security personnel. Okay, which story are we taking here? Um, commuters grown as fuel scarcity bites harder. Um, commuters, you see, along, uh, across Lagos are beginning to feel the heat of the resurgence of fuel queues. I mean, everyone can say it's either you're in traffic because um, the long queues along the road and so um, the lanes are much reduced. And uh, they're talking about uh, the fact that development both major and independent fuel marketers have also adopted different pricing models depending on their location. Some are selling for 170 per liter, others 200, 205, 210. Just, the report is just saying how many people are complaining. They're stranded at um, bus stations and taxi um, ranks because you know um, everyone is queuing up. Transporters are taking advantage of the situation and uh, it's affecting uh, transportation fare. Just the usual, usual. So we would like to know what yeah. the story is, what's yeah. causing this, and in when Abuja, this will now, end. It's gone yeah. from 300 naira to 500 naira, mm -hmm. and in so, uh, Songo, it's oh, gone from two, in few. transport. Transportation. Oh, uh, transportation. Uh, transportation. Mm. transportation it's really bad. I, I, mean, it is, has, I mean, that's what is going to happen. Added yeah. difficulty yeah. on people I think the have. reality is, well, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it another day. Let's pick up another story in turn. Yes, yeah, so um, Peter B's campaign was, the plane was guarded in Oyo because they went for a campaign a, a campaign rally in Oyo. They were at the, um, I want to get to the stadium, Lake Salami Stadium, Ibadan, Oyo State yesterday. Um, and the conversation was around the um, candidate saying he appreciated Afeni Ferry for standing with him, that he have represented, that they are custodians of the conscience of the nation. And um, just because the fact that he has a Yoruba um, the leader of the Afeni Ferry supporting him, yeah, yeah. Adibne, um, Adibayo. So Adibayo now said that people shouldn't yeah. take it personal. It's not an attack against the candidate for APC. That people are saying that he is not supporting his Yoruba brother, um, Ashima Adibola Adibayo, and that is not the case. That they should remember how he supported Ashima Adibola Adibayo when he was contesting for president, um, 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 the governorship for Lagos State. How he stood by him then, but that for now this is what he feels and is in support of the political arrangement that you should go to the um, southeast. That is not a matter of Yoruba or Igbo, it's about Nigeria. <coughs> and so, generally, campaign speech that okay. we expect to receive. Okay, moving on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune, Ikiti Assembly Speaker's impeachment reckless, says Afe Olanikweku and Falano. One billion dollar looted funds recovered since 2015, says federal government. Senate probes concession of 700 megawatts Zungeru power plant. Adebanjo leads Obidati campaign to Southwest, insists on justice, fairness, and equity. One killed palace bonds as angry residents protest installation of the new Ikinru Monarch. Um, INEC to mobilize national institutions responsible for tackling combated illicit flow of funds. And a uh, woman stabs Hobbs husband to death. Over sex nights, they reconciled after three months separation. I don't understand. Who took that story? Uh, I can do other story. Nobody. Uh, yeah, I have it. I okay, can, please, let's start with that. Let's have yeah, it. Yeah, um, they had been quarreling, so they had separated. After three months, you know, people coming and putting them together, they reconciled. When uh, she got to, they got to, he now made sexual advances to her, and she was saying, no, 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 she doesn't want. Ah. So he got annoyed and took her phone, smashed it yeah. on the floor. On. She retaliated by using a knife, stabbed him. As I, they, they paraded her, her with, um, you know. Jesus. Is it said to set to set to set to This one is set to now. This is what causes it to. This, they should have just left them in peace in their separation. <laughs> well, wow. it's not funny. Let's just, just take another step. Yes, INEC. INEC. Yes. The chairman of INEC is saying that um, um, INEC will be working with um, Sorry, um, relevant national institutions that have the res to that have the responsibility of tracking, and also have um, tracking, you know, um, funds, movement of funds, especially um, to combat the movement of illicit funds during these elections that were headed towards. He says it's 93 days away. I guess today we're making 92 days away from elections in 2023, and um, um, he was. 
responding to a question about um, financing, you know, uh, of campaigns, and he says that uh, these bodies, so that's the ICPC and EFCC, they'll be working closely with INEC to make sure that uh, all this vote buying um, um, movement of large sums of money from one place to the other that will be suspicious, mm -hmm. of course, will be tracked, and also whoever it is behind will be, you know, found out and prosecuted. He says that the Beavers is here to stay and also reiterated, as they've always done, that they are going to make sure that they deliver <coughs> for us a free and fair election. So the Attorney General of the Federation, Minister and, and um, the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Kamalami, was stating that the government has recovered a billion dollars since the beginning of this administration. Um, they recovered a billion dollars for looted funds, of course. And they were also giving some indications of some successes by the EFCC. So, for example, they said that EFCC has, has since in 2022 alone, has recorded over 3,000 convictions. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure where I, 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 can't, I can't recall that many, but that, that's what the report he was giving. He was also saying that um, there have been 109 convictions were recorded from inception of major agencies um, of the government. And he was just giving like a, a rundown of the various successes of the administration. He was speaking at FEC meeting um, yesterday. He announced that the council's approval to extend the current anti-corruption strategy document 2022 to 2026 to strengthen anti-graft fight to, to anti-graft to in the, in the fight in the country. He also explained that the same document has been adopted for the period of 2017. So he was just giving an in report. If we look at some of these reports, we can see indeed that the federal government has done quite a bit. But this is information that we have been receiving year on, year out. Yeah. If bringing all these great things towards the end of the year is, is not very, should have been done earlier. So that well, Nigerians as, have as, it at, the finger, at their fingertips. As what Mayam would say, sometimes we see the stories in the papers, but we don't take it or we don't read it or mm, we read it and follow. we don't believe them. Yes. Because you know, I've been right. reading the military stories and I'm like, the military is actually reporting regularly about yeah. all the just good like, things they've like done. NDLA. Just like NDLA. But we just choose not to believe it. Mm. You know? Somewhere in our subconscious. <laughs> yes, yeah. anything. Okay, we have to run. I think we have, uh, oh, we can run out of time. That's all we can take on front page review. You might lose your glasses. Looks like it fits me. Please don't let them fix it too much. <laughs> Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>Thanks for staying with us. So <clears throat> we are back today with another Vital Form I Create Club segment. I Create is a club that tours 100 primary schools and its activities are sponsored by Vital Form Nigeria PLC. Today in the studio with us is the first runner-up of one of the club's competitions, The Jingle. Sir, introduce yourself. My name is Denzel Fashla. I am nine years old. I attend Christian School of Pebby. And I'm in year five. And here with me is my diction teacher, Ms. Akibo Boy. Thank you. Great. So let's listen to the song that um, you had, that won second place in the jingle competition. Let's listen to that song. enjoyed that but um, I hear that you teamed up with your teacher you know to come up with this and you also rapped so whose idea was the rap I love rapping 
and I wanted my jingle to be entirely different from my opponent's jingle. Mm. So it was my idea. Mm, nice. So yeah, interestingly, it was um, Denzel's idea, the rap. But um, we also had his classmates work with him when he was about to make the choice of the beat, and it went so well. Um, I think early in the morning before they went <coughs> to the studio that day was when the music teacher was preview to listening to the song, and he was really very amazed because he had no contribution. He just decided to allow them do their thing because that's one thing we do in Christian. We allow children to be independent, and so he was very amazed at what they did. Mm. So all through the rap and the creation of the beats was done by Denzel and his friends. Amazing. Yeah. How did you feel when your rap earned you second place position? I felt so happy and delighted. Having my, having my presentation presented to the big stage was such, was such a big deal for me. So how has that changed you? How has this competition changed Denzel? It has helped to build my creative writing skills also boost my self-confidence. Now I can talk to a, f a large crowd. Okay, okay let me go on a quick break. When I come back, we'll uh, continue with Denzel. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Okay, Denzel, so if you were to, if we were to look into the future, what do you think? Do you think you would like to make a career of music or have music and then another profession combined to um, that music and another profession or just do a whole other profession altogether? I would like to com combine music and another profession and that profession will be an entrepreneurist. Wow. wow, nice. Good. Entrepreneurs, I like that. <laughs> yes. <so Right. laughs> my question is for the teacher. If, if I have a child who, whose interest lies, lies more in um, engineering or medicine or something, um, would you say the I Create Club is not for her or do you, is, is it just for people interested in the arts? Okay, so here's the so, thing about um, the I Create Club and activities mm. arranged and organized by the Vitaform. It's multifaceted. Um, for me, I believe that when a child is in a club that in, like I create, a child there is um, there to develop their confidence and their social skills. Um, when it came to the competition where Denzel was participating in, he had to come up with his lyrics. And before he did that, I want to believe that he had to develop his um, creative writing skills and he did that and I believe it's helping him build his confidence and again he also had to work with his classmates to me that's teamwork for any child that wants to excel in life you should be able to work with people develop your social skills and I create club at some point had this reading culture that they brought into our school we had to read a storybook of um, a talented young girl and this storybook was about a child that is inquisitive and this helped our children to ask questions um, while that was also going on, we had um, fun activities yeah. that were related to the book. Um, a child that had to do some kind of experiment, and if you ask me, that's science, and we did that in our, our science class. So the I Create Club is not limited to art students alone. Mm -hmm. If you're in sciences, you can also be in I Create Club. The Great. idea here is that they help you to actually think out of the box. Right. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a club that and is right for every Fantastic. Yeah, let's some, let's talk about Christland schools for a moment because of mm -hmm. time. Um, I hear that the very first business plan competition was won by one of your Ladipo Oluwale, I believe. Yes. Uh, and this one about, um, you had about three finalists yes. from, from your schools. What exactly do you think Christland is, Christland superpower is? What exactly is that superpower factor that Christland mm -hmm. schools have? Okay, I like the word superpower factor. For us in Christland, 45 years now, we're 45 this year. Oh, nice. We've been at the forefront of um, the academic sector, the private academic sector. Our vision is actually to nurture children to become all they can be through quality all-round education. And when you mention all-round education, what we have in mind is that we're not focusing only on a child's academic ability. We also look at their social skills, and that's why we imbibe the extracurricular activity. And that's where I Create Club comes in. We also have other clubs like the music club, the dance group, yeah. they all come. You have social um, service providers rather that come in to take these children in these clubs. And this helps the children to build 
they are confident and it's, it has a way of um, building their mental and physical skills as well. So right. Christland is a school that has taken learning out of the classroom. Great. Ah, Denzel, I have a challenge for you. <laughs> so do you know the list of all the pillows that Vital Form has? Yes, ma'am. Can you make a song out of it? It's just going to be <laughs> all right. Well, that's the list, right? All right. Of all the vital foam pillows. Yeah. Would you like to know the types of vital foam pillows? Would you like to know the types of vital foam pillows? Let's go. Have a memory pillow. What a dove pillow, what right. floor pillow, what a palm pillow, what yeah. a microfiber yeah. pillow, what a jumbo pillow, what a gazo pillow, what a cool pillow, what a pearl memory pillow. Let's go again. Oh. Okay, let's start Have a man pillow, yeah. watch stuff pillow, yeah. watch floor pillow, mm -hmm. watch palm pillow, mm -hmm. watch fluff mm -hmm. microfiber pillow, watch jumbo pillow, watch gazo pillow, watch coat pillow, watch pearl man pillow. The vital form pillow is the very best pillow. Ah. Yay! Yeah. We got a rapper, Denzel. Teacher has <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> become drummer. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, all, all the vital form pillows, which would you say is your favorite? I want the vital light pillow. Though right. it's not on the list, but that's my favorite pillow. Mm. Why is that? Would you say? Why do you like Vitalite? It's very soft and cozy. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, we're talking at the school's final. So I was going to say the okay. teacher. So what's what's your final words, words. to iCreate and Vitaphone? Okay, so to so iCreate, I really want to say a big thank you. It's a platform that has helped our ch children so far to build their self-confidence. And I'm really happy that we're working with them. And then for Vitaphone, uh, it's a brand I've known all the way when I was young and they've mm. kept their brand so well. Mm. I want to say a big thank you for supporting the academic um, environment here in the country. So Fantastic. Up, so it was great chatting with another child who has been Give, who has been giving us a fantastic platform by the iCreate Club and Vitaphone Nigeria PLC. It's always inspiring watching children discover and grow their talents through activities like these. Great job, Denzel. Thank you, ma. Remember, the Vitaphone memory pillows are still going out for a chance at winning. Uh, visit the iCreate Club's Instagram page at iCreate Club NG to get more details and information. Let's go on a break. When we come back, move on to our Thursday topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So it's Thursday and today we'd like to talk about family relationships and culture. Um, so there was a, a message that caught our attention. I think it's important for us to read and give credit to the person who posted it. It's, the person um, is Senator Adeshewa, and um, this is exactly what she said. Um, I think myself and Miriam will be taking the message. It says, the Jackpa culture is promoting dysfunctionality and maladjustedness in the African society and in families. People are missing very important moments of the lives of their parents and vice versa. Due to culture, this new culture, parents are missing birthdays, kids that school abroad are missing developmental stages of their siblings, friends are scattered all over the place, people's parents are dying and they can't even see their family. They've normalized not seeing their kids for many years and vice versa. This is dysfunctional and... Um, and it's sad that it's only common in African, Asian and other colored minorities are mostly the victims of this. Um, it's very unfair because the majority of white people are present for every milestone for their, that their children achieve. If they must travel, it's hardly under strict conditions like that of Nigerians or Asians. Our communities are becoming so dysfunctional. People are not seeing their husbands for many years. Marriages are breaking and a lot is happening. I'm really praying for Nigeria to be a great nation. That is so that all, you know, that we can all return and leave. So this is quite, uh, I'll say this is quite profound because in our Kirakita and, you know, all going up and down, is it what's that song? In our hustling and trying to have a better life. I mean, and I connect this with a conversation myself and my husband had recently. When, you know, because I was putting pressure on him that, ah, at least, you know, we have to start thinking of how we can have sustainable income because when the children are a certain age, they must start thinking of how they can go to school abroad. And he sat me down. He said, Mariah, 
let us analyze this abroad thing that you are planning. Let us think about it. Must our children go and school abroad? And we're having a conversation, we're analyzing, um, looking at a few people that we know that, yes, they're taking their children abroad, and then those who actually did their university in Nigeria and then went abroad and were successful. We're just, just trying in our own small analysis, we don't have any real mm -hmm. data, but just looking around that, many successful Nigerians finished their degrees here, maybe went abroad for their masters, but they were mature enough to make right decisions. You know, when the child lives so early, a lot of things, I mean, there are different factors, but we need to start having a conversation. Do we want to keep our family? Do we want to divide ourselves? Do Who stays? Who goes? Um, how do we share? How do we, you know, we, these are kind of real conversations that families are having today because mm. the reality of Jackpa is in our face. Everybody wants to leave, but we're not counting the costs. Mm. We're not counting the losses. We're not counting the emotional torture and torment it's causing us as a family. So what are your thoughts on this? I'd really like to hear from Nigerians this morning, especially those of you that made that, that, made that um, decision to Jackpa, and even those of you that are thinking about it. I mean, it's, it's a conversation we should have. We can call us on 081-270-53687, 091-390-7694. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Who would like to go first? Talk away. I, uh, I think that nobody can tell anyone how to, what's, what's important to them. And nobody can, nobody should tell anybody how to raise their children or how to raise their family. And everybody is just trying to respond to the inefficiencies within our society, you know. If our educational, if our universities are good, nobody will send their children abroad to go and study. You know, if our, if our healthcare is good, people will not be under pressure to jack by. If, they, if there's value for money, I want to buy a shoe. Right, I'm seeing $50 shoe, $50. And I'm converting to Naira, and it's, it's something thousand Naira for a $50 shoe. If we had a thriving country, we wouldn't be thinking of going anywhere. So everybody is reacting, not really thinking through their processes. Many people are relocating children abroad without understanding the entire implication of it. And there are huge um, costs to these things. Many children relocate to the second universities or secondary schools abroad without pro being properly grounded and without proper supervision, resorting to different things, some going to drugs, some commit suicide. It's so sad when you hear, when you read the stories papers of someone whose child go goes to maybe Cyprus and they said if he jumped down from a building or something happened and there's nobody to even see or investigate if that was truly what happened. There is a lot of cost that Nigerians are bearing, not conveniently for them, but because they look at the reality here and it looks bleak. So they see that place as a better opportunity for my child. I will make the sacrifice of not seeing my child every day so that my child will live a better life. It is a sacrifice. Mm. And this, the write-up is making it look like, well... It, it, Chocolate, let me pause you for a second because... Mm. If we see it from one perspective, that I'm sacrificing for, the, for my child to be better. Mm. But as I said, because unfortunately we are Nigerians, we don't have data. Or if, we, if this situation was abroad, some people have come up with some figures and data to tell you how many people traveled mm. abroad, how, how many what have their lives. We don't have the numbers. Mm. We're just hoping that they are all successful, that they traveled abroad. Mm. But let us speculate on both sides. Mm. There are some people that made the sacrifice and they're extremely successful and it's a fantastic decision. Mm. Others mm. are going there and they're biting their fingers that maybe I would have stressed myself. Because I always refer to um, Femi Falano. Femi Falano lived in Nigeria. He was raising children in Nigeria at the point where people were also jackpying. All his children did their university studies, and this, that's something this man can brag about mm. anywhere. All his children did their first degree here. Mm. Now, any noise he makes, he's making it because he's, ah, he, there's nothing nobody can tell him interest. otherwise. Mm. Let me come to you, Mara, your thoughts? See, yeah. hmm. this thing, I've thought about it many times. And you said something, it says, yes, um, we want to jackpot, we want to send our children abroad because we have determined that that's what success means. But we don't look at the cost for everything we do. There's the, you know, there are consequences. There's a cost. You'll be in the same house with someone who, uh, one child is American, the other child is British. British. You're, you know, Canadian. they're Canadian, different children in one house. That communication sometimes is almost strained, or a parent or parents who have to travel to different current countries to go and see their children. And I'm thinking, is it worth it? Mm. Is it really the only way to be successful? Is this the only way that our children can be successful if we send them abroad? Are we putting our, are we putting our energy, are we fighting the wrong things? Should we instead put our energy in insisting mm. that our government is doing it differently? Yes, you know, we have 
people are desperate and they are sending their children abroad to school. But is that enough to just send our children to school that, you know, the cost that, the, the repercussions of this many years down the line, shouldn't we all put our energies into insisting mm. that our children are able to school, you know, in Nigeria, not only for the um, betterment of our country, but even for our families. You have, this person mentioned, you have um, someone who cannot come home for a parent's funeral mm. because it costs too much to be able to do that. A parent that has sacrificed the whole world for you, you cannot even be there to pay them the last respect. Is it worth it? Because we're not talking of children who their parents even have all the money they can take them. They come back every two weeks, come back every holiday. We're talking of people that when they're leaving, this could be bye. We may or never ever. see you again. again. We would see your grandchildren on the, uh, you know, on the phone. We may never get to meet them. And I'm wondering, really, shouldn't we start... Uh, so, um, shouldn't we also start telling the government, when we are talking about our schools not working or things not working, we're not only just talking about um, them being in school. It means that you are, it's affecting families. And whether we like it or not, these little cells of families affect societies. These, all this um, goodness that we're taking away, our children, our bright, brilliant children, we're putting our money together for them to go to another country and give their best to the other country. We're stealing so... I mean, these countries are almost stealing so much from us. We're even helping them. We're giving, it's another form of um, slavery, mm. the way I see it. Let me go they will come... Break. They used to come and take us away. Now they are taking our bright minds away because our government is not doing the best. And I feel that as a country, we should start putting our energies towards insisting mm -hmm. that things work here so that the best will stay here and our families will work better. Let me go on a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So joining the conversation is an award-winning actress, voiceover artist, presenter, model, and filmmaker. She has been active for over eight years. Welcome with us, the beautiful, gorgeous Omo Wumi Dada in the building. And I saw her like, ah, she's this fine. <laughs> Good to have you on the show. Thank you so much for so having me. Before you me. came, we were talking about this Jaffa culture, you know, the consequences, because yes, many people feel is the right decision, especially because of their children. But we're talking about, we're counting the costs of this, and I was going to come to Waiki. Before I come to Waiki, let me go back to the premise that um, she talked about, the fact that those people who stay back should help in pushing the government to do the right thing. But I'm even thinking that's even a bit too far. You know, somebody doesn't want to get involved in government, somebody just a regular Nigerian, and I would even think that if a regular Nigerian just shows a child love, excessive love and you raise the child well, even in this chaotic situation where you raise a child, you give them your, they get your 100%, the 100% that you not give them when you travel, but they get that 100% and you still raise them in this society. Is it possible? You still get a wholesome child that goes to a Nigerian yes. university and still can even travel abroad in their own time. Is that a possibility? Why is that not an option? Because you're talking about how we're defining Success is it when you travel abroad, or is it when you raise a wholesome child, even within this chaos where she goes to school, and even if there are madness going on universities, but you are still having a child who is responsible enough to be entrepreneurial? Do you think that's a better option? Let me come to Waike. Your thoughts on this japa, um, the culture and the costs, especially. It, the I need to say there are two sides to the coin. There is going to school abroad, and then there is japa. Mm -hmm. There are two different mm -hmm. things. Absolutely. So I. My daughter went to school abroad. I and then decided to jackpa after. Or just stay there. Or just stay there, mm -hmm. whichever way you put it. But I remember when, because I had wanted to send her, her father wanted to, her to attend the university here. And she was like, no, she doesn't. And she was really adamant about it. I, because I hadn't thought of her going to school abroad or, so I, I now said, ah, okay, if that's what she wants, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make sure she does it so she gets. And I, there's this um, lady, she's been with, working with us for about 26 years. And she, MM, I'm sure you all know, you've yeah. been to house, you all know MM. MM came to me and said, Auntie, no literary school here. Mm. I said, ah, why? She said, ah, see university, see, she now, I can't remember who she mentioned. Yes. 
It's still there for university after how many years? Mm. So I, I, that was, was another point. So if people decide to send their kids to university because abroad, because the university system, which was excellent before, yeah. does not work here, mm. it's understandable. Yeah. It is understandable. Now, if now the government does not make you staying here conducive, so our young minds mm. are leaving, then we, do, we need to point the finger mm. in the right direction. Mm. Not me, because every human being is, I think, thinking of number one. And number one is me. Mm. Mm. So if I think I'm going to have a better life out there, which to me, I don't think so, because I never decided to mm. leave Nigeria. Mm. They, it's their rights. Right. But it, we need to make the, our government needs to make mm. governments, I didn't say government, I'm not pointing at any particular government, I'm just saying successive governments, yeah. they should make this country mm. work. Work for people mm. who want to stay. Right. I, look, I went three weeks, I mean, three weeks in England for me, it's no holiday because I'm staying with my grandchildren. Right. And I'm looking after them. When I come home, I can relax. But when I come home, back, 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 my door. Ah, this, 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 this. There are problems. The problems are some. They, they, they are. I'm telling you. You just and then you just want to just scream. Right. Let me pause you for a second because I don't want us to fall into the trap of talking about the problems because we know the problems. Everybody here knows our schools are bad. Government hasn't done anything. We know that one. We are talking about the cost of the decision. Looking at it, okay, government is bad. The school is bad. Now, if I go abroad, would I see my child? Would I miss my family? Is it enough? Is it, is it enough to pay? Am I, I really, am I want really to hear YK on that? No, so I want to. So I want to. I'll come to you and I'll come to. I want to YK to think about the answer. Then mm. I'll come back to. I, I, I yeah. know the answer okay. because my, my child hot. is abroad. Yes. So I, I have to. It's expensive for me because if I want to see my child, yeah. I, it's expensive, expensive for yeah. me to go and see her. It's. It's. I want to hold and hug my my grandchildren. I can't do it. Yes. As often. As often as I would like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They won't come home for Christmas. I will not see them. Mm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I won't see them. So it's expensive in that. Um, yeah. uh, it's expensive for me not to be able to see them. Yeah. Um, spiritually yes. expensive. Okay. But for them, for my daughter, if it's the way she has chosen her life, please. Yeah. Okay, let me come to you, um, um, among me on this matter. What are your thoughts um, on this issue of Jackpot? So we've all agreed that it's everybody's right to jackpot. Nobody's objecting to that. But our, call, our conversation really is the cost of it. If I, if I evaluate the cost, is it more beneficial for me to jackpot? Or is it rather, do I redefine what success is, where I raise my kids in love, raise them right, and still have a wholesome child in Nigeria, regardless of all the situations, and then still be successful? What, what else? Okay, so the first thing I wanted to say is that everyone has the right to choice. Whether, whether we like it or not, you will, we will all make whatever choices we feel is best for us. But the truth is, whatever choice we make has a positive side and the adverse effect. Mm. So when you make that decision, you have to be ready. You have to have thought it through because it would have its good side, it would have its bad side. And the truth is, people definitely can stay in Nigeria and believe in Nigeria and hit all the rocks that will come with being in Nigeria and still be successful. Mm. Some people will jack back, quote and unquote, mm. and still not live that fulfilled life. Mm. We've, had a, we've had quite a number of people who have jackpot, and then they realized that the opportunity for their careers or for their lives or for their vision mm. is actually here in Nigeria. Mm. Mm. Now for the children, um, regardless of whatever society that you're in, love is, is the most important. I always say that to change the world, to change the society, starts from the family. Mm. It starts with individuals. So um, it's that when you jackpot mm. and your children are out there, please make sure, make it a point of duty that they do not forget who they originally right. are. Mm -hmm. I have aunties who their, first, their, children, their children literally are born in... America and whatnot, but if you tell the children while they're small, before they start attending um, the schools there, if you tell them, come, they don't know what come is. Mm. If you tell them, wah, they come to you. If you tell them, wagba, 
Malo, they, un they understand Yoruba, for example, mm. but they don't understand English until they get to school. Mm. So it's a point. Deliberate. They are very, very deliberate and they are very, very intentional. Abroad? Yes, abroad. Oh, wow. Yes. But uh, nothing good let comes let me, easy. Let me, let me, let me, My let friend me. only speaks Yoruba to her daughter, mm. but her daughter, her daughter understands, but she can't speak. Mm. But she understands everything, everything you say in Yoruba. Even abroad. She did say that she's lived there. She's never lived here. You know, I didn't, under, I, didn't, I didn't realize how emotional this topic would be for me. Because when we're talking about it, I was just thinking casually. But as, as you're talking, as everybody's talking, I'm just thinking back to my own background. And even yesterday when I was speaking about it, I was raising this issue. I didn't grow up with my brothers. And it was a very difficult thing for me as a child. Because, you know, it was easy to say, oh, all my brothers traveled before I was born. I mean, they, when I was like about three, four years old, they all left the country. So I always heard about my brothers. Oh, everybody would come and tell you, oh, your brother in New York, you know, I was in the UK, in the UK. All these fantastic stories. I never met them. Wow. I met them for the first time when I was 15, when I traveled. Wow. And during that period in Nigeria, knowing I had brothers abroad, it was a painful thing. See, I never appreciated or even recognized the pain until even recently. Because I felt abandoned. Mm. I felt like when, when, when I was being bullied, when I was being harassed, have been there for I, you. I felt that nobody was there to fight for me. Mm. But I have brothers. Mm. You know, there will be times where you have issues whereby you feel like something, someone should come and defend you. Mm. And when I, when I had people who were talking to me anyhow, I just felt my brothers were around. Mm. It was just me. Mm. So, I understand that. But it's so, also possible that your brothers will not be the fighting ones. No. Yeah. Eating my brothers. I have three brothers. <laughs> yeah. But they are the peacemakers. <laughs> you so, you might think, what I... What I growing up, what I wished I had was a sister, mm. Mm. you know, and I, I, I felt like I really needed a sister. Mm. There were some mistakes that I had made in my life that it was possible that if I had a sister, yeah. I would not have made, made that mistake. mistake. So, yeah, it's two ways. Yeah. Your brothers right. might not have been the fighting ones, you, you see, but they yeah, might but, but also I, be I, there for you to have was, conversations. That was the cost I want us to focus on, yeah, yeah. not so the bad, I, not why it happened in the first place, but, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the effect. Yes, there are costs and. You know, to everything. Yes, and, and cause yes, and effect. That, that's true. But do we acknowledge them? Mm -hmm. That's the, we don't even acknowledge them, and we don't know how it affects how we behave, our relationship, how we going, become the adults. We yes, become. going forward. And there's something also that struck me was my brother-in-law, who's, who's always lived in who's lived in America many years, and then he will come home, and he will say to me, "See." There are problems everywhere in Nigeria, mm. the Nigerian problems, America, the American problems. But he says that there's this sense of identity where you know that you're home. You know, for us, we just concentrate on, oh, now I'm abroad, I'm making, I'm earning dollars, blah, blah, blah. But then you don't feel like you belong. You belong. And that sense of identity can be so strong. When you're home, anywhere he says, anywhere he finds himself in Lagos, he just knows that anyhow, shall we get home. But mm. I'm in my house, these are my people. <laughs> but maybe you don't have that feeling. Yes. Mm. And that? so what sort of adult uh, do you become when you don't feel like you belong somewhere? And what home? sort of children do you mm. even raise? Mm. So when you're dealing with someone that has many sensitivities or lack of confidence and you're wondering why, do you understand? These are the things. But, and whether we like it or not, we're talking about a family person. We look out for ourselves, but we all make up a society. Mm. We all make up a country. And then here we are with all our different traumatic experiences that we have refused to acknowledge and work upon. And then we have a country that we're raising children in. And you know, Nigerians yeah. abroad, I mean, I find Nigerians abroad identify 100% with Nigeria. Of Most of them, they are working to come back. Even yeah. if it is for a holiday, you see Nigerians, yeah. they, will, yeah, they, they, they all identify. Mm -hmm. They identify, identify with Nigeria more than the Nigerians who are here, because the Nigerians yeah. who are here are just saying, yeah. man, oh, let, let me Japan. just get that visa. And Japan. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. You know, so they identify. So I, I think what has to be done is to educate the ones here that it's not always brighter on the other side yeah. and give even and when the ones that are there come back we are always very cold to them mm. we are always uh, they, they are, you, are, you have dollar now yeah, so we, we now start to as. want to help them spend their dollars <laughs> you know so i think it's just we have mm. a identity crisis and there i this here i will agree with um, Mariah when she says nollywood don't uh, 
at the give the, the, Reject. the true picture. Yeah. They, they give you that picture of ah, when you go abroad, when you come back, you will buy car, yeah. you will do this, you will do that. Yeah. They give you that picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Nollywood yeah. in the house is yes. one yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why you blame us? <laughs> <laughs> what did we do? <laughs> that's that's the only place where I will agree mm. with Murayo. So so let, let's let's Nollywood. let's go back to the cost. You see, you there, there are were different generations relocating. Mm. Hmm. You cannot compare the relocating of 10 years ago with the relocating of today. The average child that is relocating, I, a lot of kids in my school have relocated. Yeah. My kids say it all the time, oh, my friend, not my friend is now in Canada. My friend, he said, I'm going to, yeah, yeah. so yeah, they're going to the UK. And these children are not even closely identified with Nigeria. These children are already American in their head because Before they've consumed they even, mm. from birth till 10, till 9, till 5. American all they have consumed is America, YouTube, cartoons, so they are already there. You're they right. have arrived there. But when they get then there, the reality they shocks it. them that they are not one of them. Yes. So what we do, what people are not realizing in the current Jaguar system is that you are taking your children who feel American or feel British and they're landing in Britain and I'm realizing right. that they are not they're Britain not so because they notice, they will look at you like you are not here. You are not here. Even the accent you thought and was American you, is not. You feel you sound phony. You are not. And they will say, come again, come again, come again. So, and nobody is talking to those children right now. Mm. A lot mm. of our people have relocated and they're not asking their child, how are they feeling in class? Mm. Because they suddenly find themselves the brightest in Nigeria. They're still shining bright, but everybody's looking at you like, yeah, you, you know too much. And there is a clash. And sometimes they dumb down mm. in order to blend. To so the conversation now is beyond your personal desire to yeah. become financially satisfied oh, and to blend in with the world. It is to ask yourself, am I, am I going to raise children that would be happy where they are? I know people that have gone there with their children and come back with their children because they saw what their children were turning into. Suddenly the girl wants to dye her hair purple. The girl wants to pierce her nose. They bring and she's the children like, and they go back. They leave the children and go so back. It's, it's about Way looking at all the options, options, truly analyzing it. Don't gloss over the stories. Yeah. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Mm. Look at the reality of what will happen if I go. How will my children be? And Can I afford to go and visit and them? To then mom. there's another category of those that send their children for university abroad. Mm. Who will never see their children again throughout that four years? Or, How will your child turn out? No yeah. supervision. You leave your child in a place where he is not, he doesn't understand the culture, he doesn't speak their language, and is being given peanuts to, to yeah. take care of himself on a daily basis. And they expected that he would just, he would oh, just I mean, turn out. There are two things I'd like you to touch on, because um, somebody was saying that a middle-class family here, somebody who's working hard and trying to bring, put everything together, decides to jack up. Now, because you go to a new country trying to start over, you end up staying in a community that might not be so rich, you know, just mm. to, because you're starting out. When you stay in a community that is not like a lower middle-class society abroad, your child ends up going to their school. Yeah. A child that went to private school here that always had a certain level, you now bring the child down into a community that is entering all these people, the Agueros of the Americas, that's the kind of school he's entering. He can't go to a private school because you're just starting out. And then you force that child into that kind of system. And you are now having to hustle. You're working two jobs to meet up. And the child doesn't see you again. Are we counting the costs? Yeah. Mm. That's, that, that's, that's, that's where I'm going to. Mm. Secondly, there was something you said I wanted to touch on. But what of the children here that the parents don't get to see? Also. Because we are, we are not thinking, yes. we, are, we are thinking of Jackman. No, there are children so, here who their parents are working only one job. Yes. By the time they leave at four in the morning to get but to grandma here. might be home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Grandma is home. Or you can move to jobs. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> so, so there's some time, so there are things there are the options. Just yeah. there are options everywhere. It's, there are some time where you are neighbor. Nipa Nima has neighbors. Yeah, what's that? Yala Olu. Yala Olu. We all know all of us. Yala Olu. So I will, so I will, I will pile up with my neighbor because I trust that my neighbor will take care of my child. This is Nigeria. You can't do that abroad now. Go and give your neighbor to who? The neighbor that is also on the clock. Yeah. On the clock. So the point is that counting the cost. Maybe I'll come to you. I want you to think about all the resources and the fact that many of this and that fact which I think is important for us to talk about. Nigerians are not jack buying. Well, I, let me, I, I stand to be corrected. Not because that the country is so bad and unbearable. Mm. These international, these, 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 um, these countries, I invite, they've opened their doors. There was a time that this um, green card lottery thing was mm -hmm. in that, a lot of us were going there. Many Nigerians went through green card lottery. When the international, when, when a country opens their doors, Canada opened their doors for an objective. They need the workforce. Countries are, so we are taking an opportunity. It's like, it's like anybody, you hear that they're hiring somewhere. I will take an opportunity. Uh, but Murayo, Murayo, listen, you have to imbibe the culture of 
this place is good. You, you have to, you have to, you have to, that, that, there I will, again I will blame government because if you don't tell your people how good your own place is, they will, you, if I come with my green card, I will want to go yeah. because I, I've heard that that place is, the, the, I, I remember the first time I went to London, I, I was like, uh-uh. Where is Where the, the gold, gold on, the street? <laughs> on the street? the gold, I know. I, 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 I was shocked. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was looking at the houses. I was, mm -hmm. ah, ah, this place is not how I, I thought know, it, would, it would be. Stand up, I'm I'm so, so, you're not speaking for your mouth. I'll let you talk in a minute. Let me, let me take this call and I'll come to your mommy. Uh, I think I have somebody from the UK. Ola Lekon, you're live. Good morning, Ola Lekon, you there? You Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm there. We hear you. You hear me? I'm waiting for you. Hello? We're waiting you for you. Go ahead, yes, please. Yes, can hear you. The first thing I would, right, first thing I would say is, I appreciate what you just said about people in Japan. The reality, reality is, let's be honest with ourselves, there's no way like home. Oh. I think we lost our call. Let me look at mommy. We want to add a few things to this conversation. There was something I wanted to say. I think that this conversation is not had well enough like people don't really talk about it especially people that, that are over there you know there's this perception that the grass is greener at the other side until you get there and you experience it fine it might be a more structured society but it also has its adverse effects which a lot of people do not talk about now people assume that oh once i go to the uk my children automatically have a better life mm. but it might not be the case mm. for you Fine, they might be in better schools, well, schools with better structure than here, but at the long run, how does it affect you? On the flip side, the parents just want financial stability. Mm. Truth is, if Nigeria was a fantastic country, Nigeria is a beautiful country, but we cannot lie and shy away from the truth Reality. that, yes, things are not working as amazingly as we would want it to be. But if things were perfect, if we had the kind of economy that, you know, the UK has, and the UK opens its doors, I'm like, why would I want to go there to go and stay? Mm -hmm. People have gone there and their lives have gotten better, mm -hmm. and people have also gone there and mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten seemingly better, but maybe not as good as um, it what, is. What I, would, what I would like to bring out from this conversation is that let us not always think I'm going because it's so bad. Mm -hmm. So that's, let me go there. So that's so the thing, really we need to talk about pressure. Mm. Yes. We need to talk about pressure and what we have decided means success. Mm. So I'm even talking to those who can afford to go and be there, but they can also afford to stay. And in the tough society and environment that we have, and we go their way. they can find their way. They have the resources. They have the money. They have the connections, family and um, relationship connections that they can find their way and live quite comfortably in Nigeria. But is it enough when you look down the streets and that person not only has the house and the car, but the children are abroad. So I would send my child abroad. Mm, in, in, without thinking, is my child going to be able to cope in a place like that? Without me the, This there. other person was able to take their child abroad because maybe they have family there. They have a whole support system. The child still goes to school, but still goes to family. But your own child will now be in the school community. Mm, no one to speak to. Mm. But you, we have to prove the point that my child too is schooling that's abroad. Yes, that's so we, we have, there are some things we need to tell uh, ourselves. Sometimes about pressure, we need to mm. show that we too, we have arrived. So I have children. I have okay. to show my child, put him on the pedestal and say, look at what I have done. Look at what I've achieved. Um, without looking point. at that, how so it affects that child. For the right reasons. Like maybe that they are ground zero in Nigeria. They hear that Canada is opening. They do the exam. They pass. And they say, you know what? Yeah, let's go. Let's because they, better. they are ground zero. But some who are actually okay, they have yeah. a decent job. They can still wiggle through this system. Well, because, ah, ah. Pressure. Let me tell you that pressure. So I get that at that point. Let me take this call from Andy in the UK. Good morning, Andy. Are you there? Hi there. Uh, You're ladies. live. Good morning. Um, yes, why I want to appreciate this discussion, um, Jack Black and John, uh, I appreciate it for bringing it up again. But what I wanted to say this morning is, um, let us all agree that Jaguar is a good thing. In this, it happens in different perspectives. Our forefathers, the Malo, everybody has Jaguar in education to better their life. That's why we had them Zik uh, Nambi, Zik Weba, Abu Lobo, and all these volunteer in class, they went abroad for Western values one way or the other. So after them, we had the Jaguar um, economic problem.
Jerusalem, people left during Abacha and Nigeria for better life. Now, today, is more of security and better life. So it's Jaffa Plus Plus we are in now. But it's a good thing. The positive thing I want to draw out from me is, one, it saves the country a lot of money in bringing experts back to Nigeria. Now, it has more into our economic issue because it is our own Nigerians that have become an expert abroad that are coming to come and add value to our society one way or the other to form a better structure uh, with uh, and some of Nigeria. Okay, so that's a good part. So, but, but, but we've not done a good job in Nigeria to receive our experts, our Nigerian experts. And that's an economy this that is This is growing. the problem. When I keep on saying so, that, no, no. Well, go, Nigeria is the problem. Like, we talk How about many experts are we, really we, even Niger coming back? The issue that Nigeria is the problem is a, is a, is a non-issue. Is a, is a, is a, is a non we know. We talk about it every day. We know. We're talking about the cost. So he is saying that there are Nigerian experts abroad. That can bring their solutions. We can solutions. come back. But you see, we have to develop a structure to receive them. People that they will come back. So, uh, so I, I, I feel like it's we... It's, it's not, we're not discussing Nigeria not working. Yes. We're not discussing, everybody, you are not, if you're, you're not here with me when I, the queue. My husband spent two hours trying to buy fuel yesterday. Uh -huh. We that know that, we know what the problems are. Mm. We're talking about the fact that is it, is, let's not, let's not rub, um, let's not push rub on honey all over the solution that we think is over there because we must realize the fact that people. there is good and bad in every Everything. country, in every economy, we know in that. every system. And we must ask ourselves, why are we really doing what we're doing? Because if I know, if I understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, I can realize that maybe I don't really need to do it. Um, but Jackma culture or Jackma cost is huge in different strata, and we, when we're dealing with it one after the other, not saying that what you've done is wrong, but saying observe if you are missing something. Somebody is um, tackling me on social media saying that I'm saying children are not. I say, because we don't talk to children. I travel. I'm the auntie that came from Nigeria. Mm. I'm the one that gets to talk to your children more than you probably talk to your mm. children to know how your children are really coping in their schools. Mm -hmm. So when you listen to me, don't say you're a bad parent. Just go and meet your child and actually ask your child how your child is really coping. Because we don't know. Hmm. We don't know. And we should ask and be sure of the mental stability of our children. Many people, many children now are actually clinically depressed, but they're not diagnosed. Mm. And many of these schools are brought the to put labels on them. Depressed. They put labels we on have, them here as we well. Do we not have clinically then, depressed children? And TNE is sense. doing a very, very stressful but loving sacrifice. And I see it and I admire it and I feel like. Because you want to see your grandchildren, your children call you on FaceTime, and you're like, doing, they love their grandma. Uh, okay. And wait, 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 we're we not talking about that part. I, 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 I have um, um, a, a, a relationship with someone who is in the diaspora, and they can't have their, the, the person cannot go. And the, the grandparents want to see the children, but it can never happen. So we're talking about looking at everything and asking so yourself I, why I, you're I, doing I, what you're we'll doing. We'll have a part two, because we have to come to her own interview very soon. Mm. But you see, there are various facts. There's some parts of where husband goes, Woman stays. And the marriage yeah. breaks up. Yeah. So, those, uh, hey, those are the ones so that so, those so, are the costs. So those are some of the costs. Where where a husband goes, wife goes, and husband stays. And there's or even as I'm on grandparents, there are other factors. So yeah. we're thinking of what that so, so I think you see yourself you, twice in a year on this conversation. Mm. Just like you said, let us count the cost properly. Before taking the because action. There are people who live in Nigeria. So I have there's a lady I've told you before, one of my children's teachers. She wants to jackpot, and me, I will support her jackpot plan in <laughs> any way. Because she's a fantastic, phenomenal teacher. She's having issues with getting her set of her stuff. She's tried. She has almost hit ground zero. She's doing everything to travel. If she has that opportunity, I will support her because she has to go. But there are some of us that have some kind of structure, you have something. That's who we are saying, count the costs. Mm. Not say because all my friends are having children abroad. Means if you can find a wiggle your way in the system, oh, wiggle your way really because your children need more of your love your support, a, a community raising them yes. in, a, in, in a structured home, and that would be more profitable to them. Then uh, you carry them to a system where they're... If you're not leave, leaving your child to house girl yeah, well, and house boy, yeah, listen, that's... because when we keep saying uh, the cost, the cost, the cost will call here. Yes. Because how many of us will go, we will say we are working, we will go from morning to night, by, by the time we get home, our children are in bed, you will say, hey, the grandmother. It's not the grandmother they want, they want you, the mother. They that's want true. you, the father. That's yeah. true. How many of us are there for our children? Yes, yes. When they are going, because we will say, hey, the, the, the abroad, here, go. So yeah, right. when you enter but traffic, you enter traffic, yeah. you come yeah. home at 12 midnight. Mm -hmm. Working is right, but we're also talking to the person that already has that really good structure okay. that is thinking the only way to show that 
she has succeeded. It's taking that child out yes. of that structure so and put there to show that So we are talking to also those people Some, that you are uh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, we're uh, trying uh, to say you are okay. Where you are, you are doing okay. fantastic, what, 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 fantastically my, well. Uh, my what my we're saying. We have to at the end of the day, be true to yourself. That's the most important. My account office are in one of the banks. Young, he looked. He was even a guy like manager. He has that card. Mm -hmm. And was it? I was even so, surprised that you, that That's you look right. as if you are so, successful. So why can we? They just have that is two no, of no, Because yes. that kind of person is went because he believes that my children need a better future. Mm. That's no, what we're trying to find. We what exactly? Because how would you ensure? That your child will have a better physique, just the education mm. or the emotional structure and foundation they need. We'll talk about we have to come back. Yes. 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 All the performances. Tell us how is how how has it been? Let me just give because you've you've done recently a lot. We saw you there and it was fantastic. Yes. Thank how you. That, how, was how, was how was that? Beautiful. How was it on the set? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Alex Shoba was beautiful uh, from the moment I got the script. So um, the very first time I got in touch with that piece, that's the play written by Wale Shoinka. I think I was in secondary school. And I read it. And then I went ahead to study um, creative art at the University of Lagos. Oh. So I read it many times. I critiqued it many times. Mm -hmm. I'd also performed it many times oh. on stage. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, on stage. So when um, Emmy Moabudu called me that she wanted to do the cinematic adaptation of it, I was like, wow, this is beautiful because I have never seen any cinematic adaptation of any Wale Shoinka's plays. Mm -hmm. And this one particularly because um, this one was really special to us and a lot of, a lot of us who were part of the um, cast and crew because um, it's not just a fictional work. This is something that actually happened mm. in real life. Mm. Like sometime in 1940, the Alafi of Oyo died mm. and then this whole story happened to the Elesh wow. So now it was, it was telling this story that is part of like our culture, mm. also showcasing um, the culture clash of what happened in the colonial era mm. and also showing the evolution for me. Mm. For me, it shows the evolution of womanhood and the strength of the girl child then and now. Then the woman in the society had literally had no say. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is the men want is what will happen. Yes, the yes. girl child had no say. Well, but now, now we have a generation where, you know, as a child, even as a baby, mm, what right, you so want is important, yeah. regardless of your gender. So it shows that we have moved as a country, yeah. we have moved as a people, Absolutely. but we also need to um, we also need to not forget our culture, our tradition, Absolutely. and um, our identity. Um, but it's been beautiful. A few weeks ago, a, a few days ago, we were discussing uh, uh, children, um, women, womanhood, and I was like, we've come along. Oh, we, women, yes. we should be, you know, we should be proud, proud of, of ourselves. ourselves. Um, I love, I love your, I, I love your roles. I love what you've done. What what God has helped you to it's achieve fantastic. in this industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> As in, so even much, when you have, you're not saying much, but you embody that ah. that that character so well. And I want to just dig deep into it a bit. So uh, before we came on air, you were saying I was like, "You're black. It's good to see everybody beauty on on, <laughs> on our <Nigerian> screen." <laughs> How was it starting? And what was the challenge? What was the prevalence at that time? Mm. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to lie, it was hard. Mm. It, was, it was a struggle. But one thing that kept me going was the fact that I knew for a fact that I was going to be successful. Mm. I was very certain of my talent and of the person that I was. And I'm so grateful that God gave me a family that also supported me. Right from when I was very young, I used to tell my brother's stories. I used to dance. I was in primary school. I was in uh, Igbo cultural troupe, mm -hmm. and I would dance for my brothers. <laughs> and in secondary school, I was in Yoruba cultural troupe. I thought I wanted to study law, and I think that I have it in me, but I think that I am more passionate about um, the art and my craft right now. Um, I studied creative arts. So right from when I was in Unilag, from year two, because we're quite lucky then that when you do your practicals in school, 
our lecturers used to um, invite external producers and everything. So my very first play, which was Moremia Joshuru, in 2006, I think, my lecturer then, Tunji Chotimiri, invited like some external producers. And my Baza, when I was in year two, I was already doing plays in at Muson Center. But I'm one person that really liked to challenge myself. Like I remember when I was in year two then, I was doing school work. I was doing a musical, which I was playing a 14-year-old um, St. Bernadette that had um, like a tiny voice, a 14-year-old girl, and she had to be singing in soprano, like, all oh, that I have said to you. And then in school, I was playing a role as a king. Oh, wow. In fact, we had Get like, boys back yes, <laughs> yes. And in fact, we had like six strong guys in my class. But the, the, the lecturer, sorry, not the lecturer, the director said he didn't want any of these people that they were, he wanted to challenge like other guys yeah. to come up and all that. And I said I could do it. And he said, wow. no, mom, we're not talking about a regent here. We're talking about a king, male king. I said, yes, I will do it. Wow. Wow. And so. it was, so outside of school, after classes, I'll rush outside for, for rehearsals. I'm, I'm the 14 year old girl singing with soprano. Yeah. And then back to school, I'm the king yeah. talking in the male voice <laughs> and all that. So it really stretched me. Oh, wow. I remember when we were doing our theoretical exam and we had the performance outside of school. I literally took bike from Unilag to Muson Center. That was the oh, first wow. time in my life because I had to make my show. Wow. But guess what? That year was one of the best. If I was 5.0, <laughs> uh, uh, you finished this. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And you, know, you know, people, someone is listening to you now. For me, what struck me was I believed in myself. I knew exactly that. I knew I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. I was certain. And sometimes I feel that a lot of people just stop there. I believe in myself. And, mm -hmm. and then they don't, don't do, do the work. work. Mm -hmm. And you, we have so many people now wanting to be everything. I want to be a star today. I believe I'm going to be a star. And so carry themselves as stars. But there's no building blocks content. of work. The, what would you advise a young person watching you today ex about realistic expectations of what it takes to get to where you are? First and first, you have to be true to yourself. Why? And ask a lot of whys. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to be a star? Why, oh, sorry, why do you want to be an actor? <laughs> do you want to be an actor because you want to be a star and a celebrity just so people can know you? Do you want to be an actor because you think it's very lucrative? You see them on social media and they always look, um, they always slay. You think they have money. They probably influence for uh, car companies. And you think that, oh, they have like one billion cars. Why do you want to be an actor? Is it diff you have to ask yourself why. For me, it was that I wanted to tell stories. For me, it was that I wanted to change the narration about so many things. For me, it was that I knew that I had this talent inside of me and I wanted to bless pe people with my talent. In fact, I say that for me, acting is a ministry. Mm. Mm. I love it. So I'm not really, I'm not really, you can see me on the streets of Lagos tomorrow and people will tell you I can take bike. I, I, I will park my car when there is traffic and yeah. I will take bike to set Absolutely. because I cannot be late. Mm. Mm. And that is me. My work comes first. My family, my work, you know, and other things. Let me come also, to is this an engagement it. ring? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I didn't see it. I saw <laughs> it <laughs> since. No, but that's like the... Please, why, why? You go announce it officially. <laughs> that's my that's question. question. <laughs> Let us see. Is that an engagement ring? Are you engaged? Are you just laughing. Look at her blushing. Uh, <laughs> 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 yes, yes now. It's so pretty. <laughs> It's okay. Oh my god. Oh, it's, it's, it's tell, us, tell us the engagement story. <laughs> no! Oh, man, don't bust the bubble. That's gotta be an engagement thing. <laughs> it is, of course. The story I'm waiting for. I don't want to share it. I think you're glowing from inside. We have just 10 seconds left to share it. You're not going to use laptop. No, no. You're not using okay, laptop to run away from this story. Please answer her question. I don't like to talk about my personality. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> so what we can induce yes. is that there is a big there's a big rock. Is in an induction this <laughs> <It's a> deduction. <laughs> <laughs> that there's a rock on her finger. We oh don't know if it God. is for a marriage or just for the She, she did not know that she will go to see it. Ah, she has yeah. found a way to... Yeah. Yeah. No problem. It's all good, though. Quick but recovery. We have three from her. We already yeah. know. We already know. We know. Okay. You know what? Okay, well, a few seconds left. What are you working on? What should yes. we do? I have Malaysia, but is anything else coming up soon? Oh, yes. Um, so many other things are coming up soon. Also collaborating with people um, producing and making movies yeah. as well. Yes. You know, look I just, you. you know, I, I just, I think I like, I really like. I like her. her. Thank yeah. you. And the reason I like you because one of the reasons why your view is so real and true is because we've stayed true to what we are. We're not mm -hmm. there for the glam. We're there mm -hmm. because we want to educate and educate people. So, and I like when I see people who is who is doing the job for the real reason. Mm -hmm. I'm really inspired and well done. Thank and I hope somebody was really learned from you today. Yeah. Thank you. Fantastic work. And I would like to say something. Um, I started watching your view when I was much younger, literally when you guys started, and I think I was in school then. And um, I, I would say that, uh, please, if you see these ladies out there, give them their flowers because they have done a lot in making the society better with their craft. Aww, thank you. Also, um, for that young girl that is watching me right now, you can be whatever it is you want to be yeah. as long as you know that whatever it is you want to do is for the right reasons Let's thank you then we have to go then you please like keep working uh -huh. on becoming a better you know, version of yourself yes. every day we have to end the show. Look, i think that you have arrived and and am i allowed to ring there yes yes yes, yes, yes. <laughs> thank you very much show. have a good day we'll we see you tomorrow <laughs> 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 we have to bring you back no no oh no. you're back